I am here before I get started with the uh, with part two of the Fratelli Tutti review. I just wanted to let you know na nagpagupit ako so uh, I hope you're not gonna be surprised kasi nawala na yung bigote, nawala na yung balbas and the hair is all uh, is all fine. So I'm still you're you're still talking to me, okay? <laughs> nawalan lang ako ng facial hair, nawalan lang ako ng buhok sa ulo. I ano, uh, it's still me, okay? Pangalawa, uh Currently, eh, nire-render na yung part 2 by this recording. So, maybe in the next few days, eh, baka, ano, baka, ayan, ako, i-dish out ko na lang part 2. And hopefully, eh, magawa ko na siya agad-agad. Kasi sobrang tinamad talaga ako. Natapos ko na yung editing sa, ano, sa part 1. Pero ngayon ko palang nire-render. Kasi, I understand na sobrang haba niya, sobrang tagal niya. So, I might as well just, um, uh, let it do its thing habang nagre-record ako and uh, habang pina-process yan sa ano kasi ang ginagawa ko si I record on the phone then uh ito, since this is Android and uh nagano siya sa Google Play and all that and then it ano and then I download it and then I um I edit it on the software so yun lang naman ang ano ko doon ang uh take ko doon and uh, one last thing before we get, we get started uh, nabalitaan ko lang din na there I, na merong isang political prisoner na namatayan ng anak I don't know the circumstances pero kasi uh, the bottom line is that uh, the woman uh, was pregnant when she was imprisoned uh, for being an agent of the Communist Party of the Philippines then uh, she gave birth to a daughter and um siguro dahil ano dahil nga she's a political prisoner and all that eh parang hindi siya binigyan ng access na ano man lang mapapreastfeed man lang yung ano yung bata so um <clears throat> as much as uh as much as I'm not really uh, sympathizing to the uh to the female political prisoner because of her ano because of her uh, a- a- affiliation with uh, communist uh, legal fronts uh it's still tragic na kailangan pati yung anak madamay so i hope that she rest in peace and uh yun lang ang ano ko doon yun lang ang uh, take ko doon so i don't want to i don't want to go uh, go deal with that kasi sobrang ano niya siya sobrang irrelevant siya sa ano ko sa uh, itatopic ko sa araw na to so yun lang and uh, with that said let's get that disclaimer going the following video may contain sensitive topics the views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own furthermore any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. Hi there, Ian here. Uh, in the previous video, I mentioned that this week has been a year since the Pachamama debacle screwed everyone up. And yes, it still hurts. Now, let's continue where we left off last time, beginning with Chapter 6. But before I begin, let me tell you something. If you're watching this and you're liking what you're seeing in my YouTube channel, please do me a favor. On the bottom right corner near the screen, there is a big red subscribe button there. Click it and make it gray. And then ring the notification bell by selecting all. Also, I would appreciate it if you would share this video and the, uh, my channel to everyone you know who wants to subscribe to a quality commentary-based Filipino YouTuber based in the Philippines who is fighting the good fight against the trends of the mighty algorithm. Okay na? All right, let's begin. Dialogue. What a misinterpreted word. The Pope defines it as approaching 
speaking, listening, looking at, coming to know and understand one another, and to find common ground. If you want, if you want to encounter and help one another, His Holiness adds, we have the dialogue. But the thing is that dialogue and discussion is something that the world sees as counterproductive. While it is important to discuss matters, they see it as an unnecessary process. And we can't blame them. Dialogue, the Pope writes, is often confused with something quite different. The feverish exchange of opinions on social networks, frequently based on media information that is not always reliable. These exchanges are merely parallel monologues. They may attract some atten attention by their sharp and aggressive tone, but monologues engage no one, and their content is frequently self-serving and contradictory. In short, what we see as dialogue is are actually monologues for information we see on social media that may just be fake news, but a shameless plug. I might develop a Spooktober video uh, as well as about alien invasion films and fake news, uh, specifically the side effects of the radio broadcast of the War of the Worlds in 1938, more than 8 years ago. So uh, off script lang, uh, I'm planning to uh, do something I don't really saw the reactions pa to, or insight or review ulit pero uh, either way uh, parang gusto ko siyang gawan ng ano gawan ng content kasi nga uh, bukod sa ang War of the Worlds eh, in Iner, Inere sa Amerika nung Halloween nung 1938 at paundas na rin ng ano ngayon, ngayon. and uh, Siguro parang konting ano lang din, pakikiuso na lang din siguro, bahala na. But uh, yun nga, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to let you know that uh, I have that ano, I have that plan, I have that uh, I have that uh, uh, on the works. So do watch that out, okay? So uh, please help me as well on uh, on that if 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 possible, alright? So, yun lang. Let's get back to the script. In fact, the irony is that the more we know, the less we understand something. And of course, there are those who take the opportunity to take the moral high ground or take advantage of the situation to suit their side of the story. The writer of this encyclical himself included, some say, but more in the criticisms later. The rest of the sixth chapter deals with the concept of consensus and the apparent apathy and indifference of people and the utilitarianist nature of modern society, the promotion of a culture of en encountering and en acknowledgement, and the importance of kindness no matter the circumstance. The seventh chapter deals with the concept of renewal of encounters in the name of truth in the pursuit of peace, the emphasis of the preferential option for the poor, and the importance of forgiveness, which I would tackle later on this video. And don't even get me started with His Holiness's commentaries on war and the death penalty. That's one hot button topic I'd rather leave to the theologians. But then again, I don't really trust Taylor Marshall's, Taylor Marshall's commentary on this, so... Go figure, the final chapter is more of a watered-down lesson on why the church should be at the service of fraternity. Being the head of the Catholic Church, the Pope extensively and haphazardly writes long and winding sentences on the importance of the Christian identity, which I personally believe is the most realistic of all religious identities. The quest of, for peace among religions and a few references to what papal naysayers call as heretics, schismatics, heathens, and pagans. Finally, the Pope closes off his long document with a few prayers. Now, aside from its length, Fratelli Tutti is a hard reading. It is a mixed bag according to some and a boring read to others, 
and it is such a slug skimming through all of it in my part. And there are some who see it as misguiding or even heretical, but more on that later. Besides, in these days when the attention span of people shrinks smaller and smaller and smaller, a document like this is considered to be too long to digest or too insignificant to even bother talking about. But you see, there are some granules of truth in the lines His Holiness wrote. But sadly, many of them are just self-referencing as I mentioned, or does not have any deeper meaning than the original sources. Many of the references of this document came from the Pope's own previous writings. In media speak, there's not too much original content. And don't even bother the parts dealing with political issues, for it is hot to tackle, too hot to tackle, and without sounding too condescending, it is irrelevant to the Pope's main job of assisting souls in attaining salvation. And honestly, I only see it as a way of promoting himself and his thoughts. But then again, you can't blame him. But real talk, Your Holiness. Your encyclical is just too long. Not to mention that this encyclical seems to be amenable to the enemies of the church when papal documents should be acts of disgust over heresies, schisms, apostasies, and false ideologies. In fact, many who are really critical of the Pope who are absolutely concerned about the very wording of the document. No explicit mention of God and His glory while interpretations may prove otherwise. No clarification about how Christian fraternity should be other than the shallow thoughts inscribed within. No formal declaration of intention to promote Catholicism at all, aside from the fact that the document came from the Vicar of Christ on Earth himself. And in fact, some of the real issues His Holiness has to squarely deal with is not mentioned, such as the persecution of Christians in China and the Arab world as well as the desecration of churches in Europe and America, the disdain in focusing on doctrinal, liturgical, and social, and spiritual rather, spiritual issues Catholics face these days, although His Holiness did offer Mass ad orientem at the tomb of St. Francis in the publishing of Fratelli Tutti, as if he, he has any other choice, and most importantly, taking responsibility for the abominable Pachamama incident and the whole fiasco called the Amazon Synod last year that some claim was the reason why the COVID-19 pandemic came about. Remember, the Red Chinese hid the discovery of the virus for months, saying that it already existed as early as August or September and that they are using their citizens abroad as walking biological weapons. And in speaking of the Pachamama incident, I have to put on record what I think about the fallout of the people I considered as my ideological peers. Around this week last year, the abomination in the Vatican happened, and many of the people I encountered fell apart on each other only because some of them took, took things too seriously or too personally when it comes to the issue of syncretism and idolatry. There are many other exchanges of tirades, but for the safety of those involved and for the sake of their sanity and mine, since I'm recording this on the 10th of October, which is uh, considered uh, by the secular world as a day, as a day of uh, raising awareness for mental health, I would rather leave it at that. In the following days and weeks, shit spiraled down uncontrollably. And all of a sudden, one of the people involved decided to block me as I decided to distance myself from his main opponent for his uncharacteristic or characteristic arrogance, or so I think, and that of his ilk, due to unprocessed childhood and young adult frustrations that seem to haunt him even if he is with his family now. And quite honestly, a pretentious person who is actually a snake in the grass just ruined everything. I don't feel that angry at both of them. I actually felt sad both of them burned down the house we all lived in. When I say house, the ideological house or the advocacy house that, or the, that common friendship that we have. And I also felt confused. So did some of us who really just wanted to distance themselves with the issue. Quite honestly, I should have done that. Pero, 
Nangyari na nangyari so <sighs> That sucks And to make matters worse We just celebrated the wedding of two of our own the month before Both bride and groom uh, were our common friends And of late uh, the bride just became a mother And um, I wanted to congratulate both of them for becoming pe- first time parents but then again, one month we were all happy, the next we were at each other's throats, and the dog just keeps barking and I don't know why the hell am I going to tackle this. And another thing that made me think about reviewing this document is the fact that a few months ago, another beef on the younger echelon of my Catholic circle came to pass just because of remarks about traditionalism and loyalty to the church nearly boiled into the Catholic version of Nico David versus Makagago but thanks be to God that one, I ignored their personal messages to me and two, they settled them themselves and somehow thought about the good of the church as a whole as they have their, their respective small influences. I being the online commentarista that I am, do welcome Fratelli Tutti as a breath of fresh air in the context of forgiveness. As it was said in the Lord's Prayer, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Forgiveness is a very hard lesson to learn. We always say in our minds, May God forgive you because I won't. We don't even think about forgiving ourselves for the things we have done wrong. And honestly, I have done the same thought process in very little ways, either intentionally or as a joke. Now, without being scrupulous about it, hopefully, I guess we should be aware of the fact that revenge is a spiritual poison and indifference in the concept of damnatio memori, aka the cancel culture, are worse ones. With that said, I only hope that if these two men who ruined our house meet each other again, if ever they do have the stomach to do so, they would at least bury the hatchet, if not resort to a tearful embrace. So overall, I can agree with the punters when they say Fratelli Tutti is a mixed bag, as it absolutely is. On the one hand, you have the typical Bergoglian rhetoric about compassion, care for migrants, being open to all faiths and none, and the like. But on the other, there is a great perspective about being a human being for once and being cautious in dealing with people who differ with you when it comes to views, opinions, statements, and advocacies. In short, the Pope is still a disappointment to the Church, that's for sure. But at the very least, His Holiness made an important point not to throw the baby out with the bathwater at the risk of becoming Jansenist Wokies. This Pope writing this ambiguous document is included in that. Now, the Lord told us to talk to the offending party in private first before escalating it to a handful of friends, a group, and if he, if he, if he still persists in his wickedness, treat him as a Gentile and a publican. Yet, he is also the same Lord who told St. Peter not to forgive his neighbor seven times but 70 times 7. That is, as much as humanely possible. At the end of it all, at the end of our lives, the Lord would only look at what we have done and if we did good to the least of His brethren. And one of them is to both admonish the sinner and not to treat him like trash. It is frustrating, indeed, to treat someone as his brother even if he has been a pain in the ass to the point of being too jaded about it. But with God's help, it can be done. And with all that said, this is Ian reminding you that at all times, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and see you in the next review. Ian out.